Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Foundations. There is hope for the future here. Mm. He is a near kinsman and there was provision within Jewish law, which was called the law of redemption. Again, the theme of redemption is just all the way through the Bible. God is a God of redemption. Foundations. Understanding the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. With Robbo Robinson and Mandy Warby. In our previous program, we began unpacking the story of the book of Ruth. And we're going to continue that this time and slowly begin to see some of the important prophetic patterns that will emerge. It's funny how you can look at this little tiny book of Ruth. And sometimes I think there are a few little books where people tend to overlook them because you think, oh, it's just a story of a family. Mm. Don't really need that. And yet this is one of the most blatantly prophetic books about redemption. And we've talked before about how the Bible is a book of redemption from the very, very beginning, right from Genesis right through to Revelation. Ruth is actually the whole story of redemption in this tiny little story. Mm. Otherwise, why would it be there? It's just the story of one particular family. And yet it's such an important family, I've got to say. And uh, so we're going to continue to unpack that story of redemption through this uh, gorgeous little book. We've also been learning how God's relationship with his people Israel, he himself describes through the analogy of marriage. And we also see that through the relationship of Christ and the church, this analogy of marriage of the bridegroom and the bride. Um, But I I do want to just emphasize again, we have said this a couple of times, but I want to emphasize it again. Because sometimes people can misunderstand that. I am absolutely categorically, emphatically not suggesting in any way, shape or form that the relationship that God has with humanity is in any way sexual or romantic. Mm. Because it's not. Yeah. There's a couple of ministries um, around the world that have gone down this road. And some of the, the adherents to these ministries have become quite extreme in that they have gone on to, you know, explain that there is a romantic element and sometimes it's very, very questionable, a romantic um, relationship between God or Christ and themselves. And if you have any kind of connection with something like that, I would say run for your life. Mm. There's nothing sexual at all in what God is relaying when he describes himself being married to his people. Yeah, I think that's an important thing to mm. realize. And I, obviously, I, uh, you look at you know, a lot of cults around the world, and they all seem to have a, a, a sexual undertone in a lot of stuff that goes on you know, behind those closed doors. So I think that's probably an indicator that you know, there's more aberration in that rather than you know, sticking with the biblical Precisely. Model. And the reason that people get caught up in that and get so attached to that is we've talked before how when you jo- a man and a woman join to them to each other, they become one flesh. Once you've joined to somebody, you've connected to that. Mm. And so if, if, if there's a ministry or, or a cult or a group that has any kind of sexual you know, carryings on in it, I would say run for your life, mm. get away from it. Yeah. Okay, so having said that, let's move on now because, again, um, we want to unpack this story because of the prophetic implications. And uh, I promise at the end of this, it's all going to present this beautiful mosaic Okay, so we got up to the part in the story where uh, Ruth vowed to remain with Naomi no matter what, and that no matter where Naomi went, she was going to follow with her, and she was going to embrace Naomi's God. She said, where you go, I'll go. Your God will be my God, your people, my people. And heaven forbid, if anything but death separates the two Mm. of us. And so with that settled, both of them, Naomi and Ruth, they they leave the land of Moab, which is actually just situated um, on the opposite side of the Dead Sea. Okay, today it's in the country of Jordan, but it's that section along or that side of the Dead Sea. And so they made the trek back to Israel. And once they got back uh, to Bethlehem, which is where Naomi's family was from, the pressure of their daily lives suddenly kicks in. And Naomi had to then school or educate Ruth some more about Judaism, about the rules of Jewish culture and practice. Now, Ruth knew that she was going to have to go and glean in the fields because it was actually at the harvest time and they hoped to be able to collect enough food for them to survive. And remember, we've mentioned this before, no social security, no food banks, Nothing like that Mm. in ancient days in any civilizational culture. But God had already written into his law 
the law of gleaning. And that was so that there would be provision for the poor, the widow, the orphan and the foreigner who Mm. lived within Israel's borders. Well, that really was the social security of the day, wasn't it? That they could go in, that they weren't allowed to glean to the very edges, that they had to allow for these people to come in and and pick up uh, the leftovers, the scraps, so to speak, so that they could provide for themselves. Precisely. I mean, today with harvesting machinery... Very little, if anything, is left Mm. behind. But when you're gleaning and you're harvesting by hand, a lot gets left. And God said, once you've gone through, that's it. You don't go back. And that meant that the poor and the needy could actually go and they would have food. That was, you're right, this was God's form of social security to make sure everybody had enough. Now, Ruth happened to find herself uh, gleaning in the fields of a man named Boaz. Just coincidentally. Just coincidentally, (laughs) not. (laughs) No such thing. There's nothing kosher about coincidence, apparently. Well, at least according to the rabbis. But it turns out that he was a distant relative of Naomi. He was quite well off. He owned property. He had really good social standing. This, For all intents and purposes, Boaz was a really decent human being, a good man. Now, he noticed Ruth because you've got to understand that Bethlehem was just a little shepherding, farming community. And like any small community, everybody knows everybody else mm. and everybody knows everybody else's business. So he notices Ruth first and foremost and he says, I don't know this woman. Who is she? And of course, being a small community, everybody knows that Naomi has come home and Ruth, who is a Moabitess just quietly, mm. is her daughter-in-law. And that's when he learns of the hardship that they've suffered, that when the, these two women uh, were in Moab, that Naomi had lost everything, her husband, both her sons, and that her daughter-in-law had come back with her and they were impoverished. And he was quite um, impressed by Ruth because, you know, she could have looked after herself. She could have put her own interests first, but she didn't. She'd committed to her mother-in-law. And so... He was so impressed that he told his workers and farmhands, he said, make sure that you go ahead of her in the fields and make sure you drop extra food mm. so that she actually gets to collect extra. I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of romantic, mm. yeah, really, yeah, isn't right. it? You yeah. know. And so he noticed her. He wants to make provision for her. And it, he also would have been aware of the fact Naomi was his relative. And so she collects all this food, she goes home, and, and she, they sit down and have a catch-up, and Naomi, who is an elderly widow now, and she says to Ruth, so tell me what happened, all this food, where did you get it from? Well, I just happened to be gleaning in the fields of Boaz. I'm sure Naomi's head pricked up that, and her ears got a little mm. bigger, and, um, and she goes on to explain all this food. Now, Naomi is thinking... There is hope for the future here. Mm. He is a near kinsman. And there was provision within Jewish law, which was called the law of redemption. Again, the theme of redemption is just all the way through the Bible. God is a God of redemption. And these patterns or these laws that God had put in for his Jewish people are the very laws that we see that literally will reach out and embrace the whole world. And so she thinks, okay, I need to explain how this is going to work. If we're going to have a future, if things can be redeemed, we've gone from the loss of everything to abject poverty and beggary. If we want to see that reversed, then these laws of of redemption are going to have to come into play. So she explains how this law of redemption works. Now, here's something about the property or land sales. Because, remember, God had already said these are the boundaries of the people of Israel and within the, those boundaries there are boundaries for each of the tribes. Now, the way it worked was that if you if we sell property today, we lose absolute ownership of it and we can only get it back if we actually purchase it back. Not so in Israel. The a tribal land had to stay within the tribes and if you became impoverished or for whatever reason you needed the money – and you sold your land, it was actually never like a permanent sale. It was more like a lease agreement Mm. for a period of time. And the land would then, and all the profit that came from it, would be from the leaseholder. But either at the end of the lease agreement or at the 50th year of Jubilee, all land property had to go back to its original owners. That kept the land within the family line and within the tribal line. And this way, the land and the inheritance and family lines lived on through perpetuity. That's the way it worked. Mm. And so you have Naomi's family, which has lost everything. 
Now they have the opportunity for redemption because another family member could like redeem the land, redeem the family and keep the family going so that they would have a future. Well, next time on Foundations, we will continue to tell this story of Naomi, Ruth and Boaz and the way that redemption is illustrated through this beautiful story. That's next time on Foundations. This has been Foundations, a look at the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. For study notes, resources and more, see vision.org.au slash foundations. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.